that I think that really does speak to the quality of Hermes pieces. Hi everybody, so a number of you have actually reached out to me over the last like 24 hours in regards to a video that Beto's Leatherworks LLC put out about a $5,000 Birkin bag restoration. I will link his video below because it is fascinating, it's great. I actually am a huge fan of Beto's Leatherworks because he is a master craftsman who really has the work to back up and the knowledge to back up what he's done. He knows his leathers, he knows his craft and he's he's fantastic he actually knows what he's talking about when he deconstructs pieces and remakes pieces so i do recommend checking that video out all of his videos are really really great he has his own business and they have, people have been going to him for a number a number of years it's it's like i think he's a fourth generation leather craftsman so i would recommend checking him out but a number of you reached out to me in regards to my opinion as to basically what he did and then about the bag itself whether or not i thought the bag was authentic and then what i thought about what was happening inside the bag now, uh, really quick, uh, in terms of what did happen inside the bag, this is a bag from 2009, and according to him, the bag was kept in a garage for who knows how many years without any temperature control, without any um, uh, moisture or humidity control. I don't know where the bag was located, so it was just like left in a garage for a, a really long time, and the inside of the bag was deteriorating. The bag smelled of mildew, of mold. He had to wash it, condition it, and it was just, it was a, a very involved process that took about $5,000 and took him 50 minutes of a video to show. And I wanted to just address that as some of you asked me to. And so first of all, I do want to say that I do think that the bag is authentic, or at least it was when he started working on it. I do think that it was an authentic Hermes bag. The blind stamp looked good. The artisan stamp looked good. The saddle stitching looked good. Uh, everything about the bag, except for the fact that it was deteriorating on the inside, looked fine. And he even said that the leather itself was very, very fine quality leather. The bag itself was great. And I really want to talk about that. I'm going to get to that in a minute. But I do think that the bag was authentic. Now, do I think that the bag is still authentic after he completely reconstructed it and used different materials on the inside? I don't know. I'd really love to hear your opinion about that. At what point does a bag no longer become an authentic piece? How much of the bag needs to be replaced or restored for it to no longer be of the original manufacturer's make? I think that's really interesting. Leave your comments down below on that topic because I'd love to hear your opinions. But in regards to what he did, in regards to the, the, the bag itself, the bag, yes, was deteriorating on the inside, and what was deteriorating wasn't the leather, okay? The leather itself looked like it was in really good shape. He said that it stunk, but the leather itself was in really good shape, and he even said so that the leather was very high quality, and that's true of Hermes leathers. The leather is very, very high quality, and the inside of the bag, though, the, the part that was disintegrating, deteriorating, was the interfacing. Now, interfacing is something that's very commonly used in clothing construction and also bag construction. It is just a piece of material, fabric, cardboard, even plastic, that is put inside in between two pieces of material to strengthen it and to provide structural support and integrity. A lot of garments use interfacing, handbags use interfacing, Chanel bags do use interfacing, and parts of Birkin bags do use interfacing. In fact, when you have a Birkin bag that has the leather on the outside, the leather on the inside, and then they're attached on the top with stitches and the glazing, inside those two things, sandwiched in between, is interfacing to help the structural integrity of the bag. So what was disintegrating on the inside was the interfacing, and I don't know what the interfacing was made of. It might have been a cloth. It might have been a more uh, thick, sturdy material. I don't believe that it was cardboard because cardboard is very rarely used as interfacing. It's not a sturdy material. I think Kirk Geiger might use cardboard as interfacing. It certainly feels like it, but Hermes, I don't think, would be using a like a cardboard type of interfacing. I don't know. I haven't you know, and deconstructed a, a new bag, but I, I, I don't know what kind of interfacing they use. Regardless, it was disintegrating, as you can see in the video, it, it is very, very bad. And well, the bag was in a environment that wasn't temperature controlled, that wasn't heat or moisture controlled. And if mold or mildew infiltrates any item, it can deteriorate incredibly quickly. Even a house, if a house has mold and mildew, the house itself, the structural integrity of that house is doomed if it's not taken care of immediately. Like even if it is started to take care of, it's it's not a, a good thing for that house. And a leather bag, of course, is not infallible either. It is going to be susceptible to wear. Now, leather is an organic material and it is going to de deteriorate over time, but it is a very sturdy material. And so it is less likely to deteriorate over time over a fabric item. 
And so the interfacing, which was the fabric, was deteriorating, but you'll notice in the video, the leather itself is in pretty good shape. In fact, the leather and the coloring of the bag, he has to clean that leather and condition that leather, I think he said like three, three times, he completely cleaned it and conditioned it. And the leather looks great. The color also, the, the dye looks great. That shows the impeccable quality of the leather and the dye that was used to color the bag and to create the, the bag. The materials are, are very, very good. Now he does say that he doesn't believe the bag is worth the upwards of several thousand dollars price tag, which is fine. He does say you're paying for the heritage and that's true. You are paying for the history and heritage when you buy any brand name item. The leathers, the craftsmanship, they only can cover so much of something that's upward of $10,000. That's true. That's a fair point. But in terms of the quality and make of the bag itself, the leather held up. The interior of the bag, the interfacing, didn't hold up to mold and mildew in the same way because it was a less structurally sound material. It was something that was more susceptible to mold and mildew, especially it was like a fabric material. Material. It was going to be something that deteriorated faster when moisture and mold and mildew attacked it. But the leather itself held up. And that, that I think that really does speak to the quality of Hermes pieces. He took it apart. He had to clean it and condition it. He had to clean all the um, metal pieces. He had to reline it. He relined it in a blue lambskin. And you'll notice in the video, when he relines it, he also uses interfacing. He uses a ribbon to help reinforce the zipper and he uses an interfacing backing to sandwich between the leather that the Hermes bag originally came with and the blue lambskin that he lines it with. So he adds the interfacing himself. How the bag needs to be made structurally sound, uh, interfacing is just used for that purpose. Now, where do I stand in terms of the bag's quality and how it can last? Well, I already talked a little bit about that. I do think that the quality is impeccable. He said the bag quality of the leather was very good. I think the dyeing process also impeccable because that leather stayed that blue color throughout his entire cleaning and conditioning process, the entire part like that, that is really, really cool. And so I, I think that it does show the, the quality and integrity that Hermes puts behind its designs. And also I did want to point out that when he reconstructs the bag, he doesn't change anything about it besides what he replaces. You know, he, he replaces the parts that need to be replaced and then he stitches it up. He hand stitches uh, the rim around the bag. He adds the glazing. He does machine stitch the bottom. So the, the bottom was machine stitched, not hand stitched anymore. So that's another point into like, is it like originally Hermes now or not? Like a res wasn't going to respa this bag. Obviously it was probably too far gone for them to touch it. So if it was going to be restored, it would be restored by a third party so by him who clearly is an expert and master at his craft because he did a fantastic job now based on all of these things do i think that hermes is worth the price tag i mean i am a luxury lover i am appreciator of finely crafted things and i think that there's always going to be people who don't think that hermes is worth or any luxury item is worth price tag because you know the quality of the leather the quality of the material the craftsmanship like that's still not going to equal ten thousand dollars okay fine it, it, you know if it doesn't for you it doesn't for you but for some people who do want that type of quality and who also want the heritage and history that comes with the brand and some people also want it as a status symbol that's true that's that's fine okay you know for some people it is worth that and i think that there's always merit in paying more for something that's excellent quality. Now, not necessarily $10,000 excellent quality, but something that is more expensive because the materials are better, because the quality and craftsmanship are better is worth paying for, in my opinion. Like I'm always going to want to pay for like a natural fiber fabric sweater that's like really good quality. The stitches are great. It's going to hold up and span the test of time or something that's like fast fashion and won't last very long. I actually am going to be making a video soon about machine versus handmade items and what can be considered machine made versus handmade and why we consider that gooder better quality so stay tuned for that video i'm really excited about it i think it'll be a good one but in terms of just what is worth it to you you know, I think that this really spoke to the ability of Hermes to create a really beautiful bag that really did stand the test of time. Like you can see vintage Hermes bags from the 50s, the 60s, the 20s. I've seen vintage Hermes bags that people are still using to this day because they hold up so well. I think that really speaks to the brand. And if you're like only buying one handbag, for instance, and you buy your handbag from the 1920s and you have that for the rest of your life, like, okay, it might've been a really expensive of handbag but it was certainly going to get that cost per wear down if you keep using it right 
So, you know, I think that there was a lot of things that you could be able to take away from his video. Certainly, it was fun to see the Hermes Birkin deconstructed because he actually, you know, by a master craftsman who knows what he's talking about, like that was super cool. And then seeing it remade also was really, really interesting to see how a master craftsman might be able to construct this type of thing. Now, I did last year get to go to an Hermes uh, event where I did get to see a Kelly be made in front of my eyes. I got to see their scarves be made. I got to see the Kelly made. And it was, I, I got to see a saddle being hand stitched. It was very, very cool. I'll link that video for you because I did try to take you with me. So I'll link that video for you in the eye and also in my description box down below. So I rec recommend checking that out if you're interested in learning a little bit more about Hermes craftsmanship. But I do think that it just, you know, I'm, I'm, I do think that it really does speak to the integrity of the brand and the quality of their make and their, their skill of their artisans and the quality of their leathers. And I just think that's really cool. Now, circling back, I do want to hear your opinions. Like I said before, is this bag still an Hermes Birkin? Well, he did replace the lambskin. He did replace the lining. He did restitch it. And some of the stitches were machine stitched as opposed to hand stitched. I would love to hear your opinions. Is this still an Hermes Birkin bag or is it no longer an Hermes bag? Is it now something a little bit to the side of it? I wouldn't call it necessarily a replica. I wouldn't call it a fake. And it certainly isn't a dupe, but it is a bag that has undergone such intensive heavy repairs that it's no longer like the original thing anymore. Or is it? I don't know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear your opinions. I also really quick want to say thank you to the people who reached out to ask me my opinion. It was really cool of you to do so. I really appreciate you thinking of me when you saw this uh, be talked about. So I wanted to say a little bit of shout out to that as well. Thank you for thinking of me and reaching out. I hope that this video addressed what you were looking for um, and that maybe you learned a little bit more about interfacing because that was kind of one of the big talking points about this, uh, this video. Just interfacing, kind of important, very good for structural integrity and might disintegrate if exposed to moisture and humidity and mildew and mold in a garage for insert number of years. If you like this video, please give it a like. It super duper helps the algorithm and subscribe for more content that helps the algorithm even more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.